this recording is used for biology students as kind of a review. Uh, it's not intended to be any kind of first instruction in the metric system. It's a, it's a real quick review uh, to get them moving along with some measurement labs and uh, uh, some, some simple conversions. So don't use this as the first introduction uh, to the metric system. Um, brief review on the metric system is you have uh, metric prefixes, which I'm only going to talk about the, the middle six here, kilo, hecto, deca. The unit, what we mean by the unit are um, whatever units can go at, and attach to these prefixes. So you can have kilometers and kiloliters and kilograms, and you can have centimeters and centiliters and centigrams. So your base unit right here in the middle is just whatever base unit that you are using to measure with. Uh, there's more than just these, of course. These are just the three common ones that you see in a biology class. And then underneath each of these prefixes, deci, centi, milli, etc., I've given their value. For instance, deca means you have 10 of the base units. So a decameter is 10 meters long. Uh, a hectometer is 100 of the base unit. So if you have one hectometer, you have 100 of the base units, uh, 100 meters. Um, and a kilometer means 1,000 meters. You have 1,000 of those units. Whereas deci and centi and milli are all fractions of that. A decimeter means that you have one-tenth of that base unit. And so a decimeter then is um, 0.1 meters, and a centimeter is 0.01 meters, and a milli is 0.01. All right. Um, I give students an acronym. That's what these letters here down the side are for. And the acronym I give is, is King Hector doesn't usually drink chocolate milk. Uh, if you're taking notes for my class, you can pause it and get this down. But if you can remember, King Hector doesn't always drink, uh, doesn't usually drink chocolate milk, uh, you can remember the order of the metric prefixes. I do also want to remind people on how we're going to use the... Um, the rulers, there's, there's for some reason lots of confusion. Um, the vast majority of the time we're going to measure in the metric system. So I want to highlight some issues with the metric system here. I have this arrow on here. And you can see it starts at zero. What's its measurement? Now the first thing is students get a little bit confused. They see this ruler and they don't know what the zero and the one and the two and the three mean. Well, uh, over here they have their units, mm and cm. Well, the millimeter is smaller than the centimeter. Milli is a thousandth and a centi is a hundredth. And so the millimeters are the smallest marks on here, the little teeny tiny ones. So the zero and the one and the two and the three and the four, these are centimeters. So this arrow is over seven centimeters long. And then when we write down our, our measurement on this, it would be seven point and then however many lines that extend. So it goes one, two, three lines over. So this would be a measurement of 7.3 centimeters in length. Now, if I had that same line, um, double end arrow and I put it in the inches system um, what do each of these little lines mean well each of these little lines on here are 1 16th of an inch it's divided into sixteenths not tens so when you're dealing in an inch system you almost always are dealing with fractions and that's a little bit more difficult so you can see this line right here it's it's more than two and a half inches it's over two and three quarters so what's each of these lines then is what well each of these lines is a sixteenth and so there's 16 lines between the two and the three. So this is this is one sixteenth, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sixteenths. That's eight sixteenths is a half. That's why it's two and a half. I'm bringing the arrow back there. Uh, so that's eight, and we got nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Looks like it's fourteen sixteenths long. And so this would be written as two. Now fourteen over sixteen reduces to seven eighths. And if you know anything about the inches system, the biggest line is the half, and the next the longest lines are the quarters, and then the next longest line is the, are the eighths. And so this goes up to seven eighths. So this is two and seven eighths inches long. And so you can see by this, I mean, who, who wants to deal with fractions? Nobody wants to deal with fractions. And I've seen inches rulers that are they're divided into tenths of an inch and not fractions. But it's a lot easier to write down 7.3, a nice decimal system. We don't have to worry about reducing fractions or anything like that. All right, so let's talk about metric conversions. Uh, so when we do this, I'm going to flip over here to another program. And I'm going to try to write here. I don't do this very often because I can't see very well when I do this writing. I should be doing this on some kind of device that I can actually uh, 
uh, see better with. So I've got the King Hector doesn't usually drink chocolate milk up here. Uh, and what I want to do with this is I want to use this then and um, we're going to convert a couple of these and, and you can double check your answers. Maybe I'll do this first column here for, the, for our practice here. Okay, so how do you use the King Hector doesn't usually drink chocolate milk? And so you're given 1,000 grams is equal to a kilogram. Well, the first thing you need to figure out is where in the King Hector mnemonic do you start at? Well, I've been given grams. And so if you remember from the previous slide, and let me bring that previous slide up, the unit is meters, liters, grams, there could be all kinds of stuff, volts, whatever, because you can have centivolts and, and kilovolts and all kinds of other things here. So the unit is right there in the middle. So the unit stands for meters or liters or grams, and that is what we were given. We were given grams. So we're starting here at the unit right here, and I'll mark that in yellow, and I'm going to kilo. And so the kilo is over here. So what you do is you put your finger, or in this case my little digitizer pen, on the U, and I'm going to count one, two, three places to the left. Now three places to the left is exactly how I'm going to move this decimal point. And so where's the decimal point in a thousand? Well, the decimal point in a thousand is right here. And so you move it one, two, three places to the right, and this becomes one kilogram. All right, let's do the next one. Maybe we'll do the top. I don't know. I don't know. We'll do, we'll do, I guess this whole, this first column. Uh, here you have 0.23, and I'm using capital letter D for decagrams. Now, when I was in school, it was capital letter D, and that's what we learned. And I know it's no longer that, but to make the, the process simpler, we're going to go with a capital letter D for decagrams, lowercase letter D for decigrams. Yeah, I know that's not technically right, so don't message me and tell me, no, I got that wrong. Uh, we're going to go with that right now. Um, so we got 0.23 decagrams, and we're going to go and convert to grams. So where you start at? Well, you start here with deca, and I'm going to convert it to grams. Well, grams, again, is the unit. And so you put your finger on where you start. You're starting on deca, and you move your finger one place to the right, and that's how you move the decimal point. And so you, put, you start on the decimal point right here, and you move it one place to the right. And so this becomes 2.3, and give me a second here. Sorry about that. 2.3 uh, grams on that. All right, give me a second here to erase this right here. All right, what about the next one? Well, we've got 345 meters. We're going to kilometers. Now, you know what? Let's skip that one. Let's do the next one. Let's do 32 decagrams to milligrams. And so where do you start at? Well, you're starting on deca, and you're going to milli. And so that's the M. So we start here, and you're going to go one, two, three, four places to the right. Well, the decimal point's right here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this number here. So I've got 32 decimal points right here, and I've got to move it one, two, three, four places to the right. What that means is I have to add in four zeros, and this is going to look terrible. I'm going to try my hardest here. I add in four zeros, and what this means is, is this becomes now 32. I move four places to the right, and I'm going to add four zeros on here. Three, four zeros. This is 3,200 milligrams. So all it does is it takes knowing exactly how to you know, start and stop, and you count the spaces, and you, you move the decimal in the same direction. Uh, so on this last one right here, we've got hectometers to decimeters. So you start with H for hecto. And you're going to go to deci, the little d. So you go one, two, three places to the right. Here's my decimal point. I'm going to go one, two. I've got to add a zero on here. I'm going three places to the right. So this now becomes 3,430. Because it was 3.4, and I moved one, two, three places to the right. And I now have 3,430 decimeters, which makes sense. 3.4, I mean, yeah, 3.4 hectometers, that's a long distance, all right? So, you know, um, we're going to have a lot of decimeters in that hectometer. All right, just to fill in this last column, let's do this one. I didn't want to do it at first because it's the same as, as this one right here because you're still going from the base unit uh, to kilo, and I probably should redo it, but that's all right. So we got, we're going from meters to kilometers. So meters is our base unit. Now the first time, grams is our base unit, but this time we're being given meters. You can recognize your base units because they're only one letter long. 
And okay, I know sometimes that doesn't always work because sometimes there's there's two letter units. But in our case, it's always going to be the case that it's one letter for the base unit. So we're starting here at meters and we're going to go to kilometers. So you go one, whoops, didn't have my writing tool on here. You, oh, this writing tool is still not on. You have one, two, three places to the left. And so I move my decimal one, two, three places to the left. I always like to start my decimals with a zero. So this is 0 0.3 four, five kilometers, which makes sense because in order to have one kilometer, you need to have 1,000 meters. We don't have 1,000 meters, we only got 345. All right, so if you're doing the notes on your own, what I recommend you do is you do the second column now and you come and you check your answers with me in class. At this point then, we can now move on. We have a measurement lab uh, or we have a uh, worksheet on doing conversions. So see me about your next assignment if you're watching this because you missed a day. All right, thank you. Have a good night.